What we're going over today is a 4F overhead gas tungsten arc weld. So 4F means it's an overhead fillet weld. What I'm going to do is go over uh, kind of all the parameters. I got them written right here for what we're doing. Um, go over kind of two techniques that we're going to be doing out there. And then I'm going to go on to the main point that I want to make when you're doing overhead in the end. And then we'll get out there in the weld. I'll do an introduction at the machine. We'll get into doing the two techniques that I got listed over here. And then we will uh, wrap this thing up. So let's get right into the parameters. I think I got them all written here on the board. We're starting with a T-joint, so a T-joint just means you have two plates coming in perpendicular to each other, and you're, of course, going to put a fillet weld on a T-joint. Um, it's just going to be upside down because we're doing 4F. If you don't know your positions, you know that as well, by the way. So uh, 4F means overhead fillet weld, okay? Uh, our filler metal is going to be ER70S-2. I don't know why I've got ER70S-2 and not ER70S-6, but I was playing with it, and it, it, it ran all right, so I'm going to run it. It's... Um, uh, usually we do ER70S-6, I don't know if we got it by mistake or, or what the story is, but we're running ER70S-2, 100% argon is going to be the shielding gas, all right, but you always want to make sure you know your shielding gases, uh, 332nd of an inch, 2% thoriated is going to be our tungsten, uh, ground to a point, I guess I didn't write that down, but yeah, you want to grind that to a point, typically when you're doing um, carbon steel, uh, 100 amps, so... The machine's going to be set at 100 amps, which means when you have the foot pedal all the way down, you're at 100 amps. You want to be somewhere around 65 to 75% so you can increase that amperage or decrease depending on how the weld's going into the actual plate. 25 cubic feet per hour, that's what we're running our shielding gas at. Uh, five second post flow, so when you get done with that weld, you hold that uh, torch right there and it's going to have 100% argon coming out at 25 cubic feet per hour for about 5 seconds to make sure you don't get atmospheric contamination at the end of the weld, right? Now the two techniques that I'm going to do here are, I wrote no dip and dip. Um, typically when I'm in TIG welding, I'm dipping and moving, dipping and moving, dipping and moving. There's a lot of people that are doing, um, oh, when they do overhead, they want to do a little bit of a weave so they can keep the the cup on touching the plate. It's not necessarily a walking the cup, but more of a, a guidance thing because you're upside down. And they'll take the wire and they'll just lay it in the joint and just weave the wire into it. So that's why I wrote no dip. You're just gonna weave the wire into it. I don't really like doing that, but I see a lot of people doing it. So I wanna make sure that I'm keeping up with the times what people are doing. So I'm gonna do a no dip, which is just basically weaving that wire into the actual uh, joint. Then I'm gonna go with what I normally do more of a dipping action and moving and I'm going to do a little bit of a weave on each one of these. I don't like doing big giant weaves, but uh, you know, that's just my preference, I guess. So we're going to do one no dip, one dip where you're dipping and getting out, dipping and getting out. But the main point I wanted to make when you're doing overhead, anytime you're doing overhead, it doesn't matter if you're doing MIG, take, stick, flux core, this is the key to it right here. Get comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you're not going to be able to put a good weld down. So do whatever you got to do to get comfortable. It might mean welding up something to put your arm on or getting into uh, some different positions. Whatever you have to do to make yourself um, get comfortable, you got to do it. Because when you're upside down, it doesn't weld a, a whole lot different than flat, in my opinion. It's just the fact that you're not comfortable because you're upside down. So the main thing I want to point out here uh, when you're doing an overhead is, is get yourself comfortable. So we're going to go out there. Get this going on our overhead uh, TIG weld on 4F, so it's a T-joint upside down basically. So let's go out there and uh, we'll do an introduction to the machines and you'll see some of these numbers on there I guess and we'll get into it. Alright, here we are at the machine. You can see it's down on the TIG insignia. Down here it's on the foot pedal. If you were up here you'd have the scratch start. 96 amps. Uh, what else we got? Direct current electrode negative. And that's about all I got. So we should be ready to rock here. Let's get into this overhead. All right, so here we go. This is the first technique where we're not really doing a dip, just kind of more uh, weaving the wire into the joint. And it was extremely hard to film this. So we did about five plates before we got this shot. And you can see it's just a slight weave I did have a couple times where the, the uh, filler metal kind of balled up before I got to it with my uh, tungsten and the arc, and I angled it back towards the weld to prevent that. But I just make my way across this joint, 
slight weave, like right there, you just saw it ball up. That was just, I think, because I was putting uh, too much of a leading angle. There it goes again. A little bit too much more of a leading angle. And so if you get that ball and up action, just kind of point the arc back towards the weld, and it should clear that up. We're almost at the end here. And then once I complete this, you're going to see that I hold the torch there and let that five seconds of post flow make sure there's no atmospheric contamination. So you want to hold it right there like that. We just struck the arc here on kind of more of our dip technique. You can see I'm dipping and getting out on this one. Again, with a little bit of a weave. My cameraman got a little shaky here, but it was extremely hard to film this, so I had to use this shot even though it was a little shaky. And you can see I'm dipping and getting out, dipping and getting out, with a little bit of a weave going forward. And you can have a little bit more of a leading angle on this one because you don't got to worry about uh, uh, prematurely melting the, the filler metal because you're getting far enough away where it won't ball it up like it was on that first one. Again, we're going to stop the well at the end, hold the torch right there and let that post flow make sure there's no contamination in the end there we go so I've got three overheads that I did the first two I was having trouble with and I realized it was because I had welds on the other side this is one of them and where you see them gaps in the dips, it's kind of where I was sucking in nasty stuff in between the plates. So the third one's the best one, and that was the one that I finally did on new material. So this is plate number one. We'll look at plate number two. Next. All right, this is a look at the second one that we did that was kind of dirty. So we're going to move on to the third here. You can see the start. It was a little shaky, and it got a little uneven in the middle. And then I did one on clean metal, and it was fine. So let's move on to the third one here. All right, this is the third one we did. I said I wasn't going to wire wheel it. Then I couldn't even see it, so I ended up wire wheeling it. And now it's too bright again, but hopefully you can see that. That wraps up our uh, 4F TIG. So thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld, and we'll see you next time. We're out.